In this video lesson, we look at the automation of the tasks that you would normally do inside the IDE. So we will look at what task can and must be automated for CICD, automating the builds, automating the programming of flash memory, a demo of the automation, some prompts, and finally a very short summary. So let's get started. We do a lot of tasks in the IDE, and the question is which of these can and must be part of CICD automation? Well, I list the tasks here, and I group them in different colors. These first few tasks in red are, to me, clearly manual tasks. They are really design work, like creating the project, configuring hardware, and so on. These have really nothing to do with CICD automation. Now I'm going to go down to these green tasks. These have to be part of CICD automation because you are constantly modifying code that needs to be built and programmed into Flash. So that leaves these two tasks in blue. The first blue task is regeneration of IDE supplied code. This is done after making changes in hardware configuration or IDE managed software configuration. Now, normally you don't do this that often, and since you use the IDE, uh, to make these changes, it isn't hard to just have the IDE generate the code right then. Now, the second task in blue is creating and updating make files. Now, this can happen more often. For example, if you add a .c file or change compiler settings, the make files usually have to be updated. I would really like these make file updates to be handled by CICD automation. But here's a spoiler alert, the CI-CD system in this course doesn't handle these blue tasks. So what does this mean to you as a developer? Well, for the regeneration of IDE supplied code, I don't think it's a big deal. When you make changes like hardware configuration, you generate the, regenerate the code. In fact, I think the IDE uh, usually reminds you to do this. Now, make files is a little trickier. And I imagine a development workflow uh, to accommodate this, sort of like this. So you make code changes in the IDE project and you build them. Uh, first, you fix any compiler problems. Then you test and debug your code using the IDE. Normally, you have to make more changes and you go through this uh, loop here back and forth as you uh, refine your code. So when you reach a point where you're happy with your code and you want to push it to Git for CICD, CICD you first do final uh, IDE builds for both debug and release to ensure the make files are up to date. It is quite possible there are no make file changes, but unless you know that for certain, it's just good to do this step. So then you do the git commands to uh, commit file changes, both code and make files, and you push the commit. I view this as a workable system, even if it isn't ideal. So first we need to automate the build. And in particular, we need to build flash images for both debug and release configurations. Now with STM32Cube IDE, there are at least two options to build from a script. First, we can build using STM32 Cube IDE in what is called a headless way uh, using command line parameters. By headless, it means the GUI I don't think even appears on the screen. The IG IDE just does the work. And there's an example of this in this uh, file that gets installed with the IDE. And you can look at this and see how to run the IDE headless to do things like builds. Now, the other option is to simply use make. This is possible because the IDE itself uses make to do builds. The key is that the IDE uh, generates and maintains the make files. And this option depends on the IDE doing this for you. Now, I chose option two. The major advantage is that it uses the standard make tool. There is no dependence on the IDE or fighting with the IDE. Uh, frankly, I did play around a little with headless builds and I started having issues and I had real doubts that I could uh, use this method. And in general, I would like to move away from the IDE in this project. So 
the major disadvantage of option two is that, of course, you do depend on the IDE to update make files when needed. And we just discussed that on the last slide. So now let's create the build script. It turns out that the IDE uh, provides the basic information to easily create a build script. So we go to the project properties um, and get some environment variables. And here is the path of where you, uh, where you find those. But we can, I, we can go down to this uh, screenshot I made, and this uh, shows you where you find them. And the variables we're interested in are first CWD, which is current working directory. And this is where you have to be when you perform the build. And then the other thing is a updated value for the path. So what the IDE has done is taken the standard path variable from your system and added a few things for the uh, tool chain. The other thing we can see in this screenshot is the, this console here. And I had done a build just before I took this screenshot. So here's the command to do the build. And it's one line, make uh, dash J4 all. And uh, the J4 is uh, telling make you can run uh, up to four um, steps in parallel, four compiles, for example. And that's because I have a dual core um, laptop with uh, hyperthreading. So going back, um, we can take that information and we can build a trivial build script for doing a debug build. Now this isn't a great script, everything is hard coded, but it gives you the idea. So uh, set local is just a Windows thing. You can see uh, why that's useful to put in there. And then we take those uh, environment variables, uh, the values from the IDE and we set CWD to one of them, and then I set the path to the path that was in there, and I just said I snipped a very long line. The, the, the path is like five lines long or something. I didn't want to put it in here. And then the actual script, all it does is it CDs to this directory, and then it executes make-j4 all, and that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. I was sort of surprised at how easy it was to create this script. Now, for Jenkins, when it does builds, the script is a little bit more complicated because first, we don't want to be hard coding uh, these, these things in here. And the other thing is that the, uh, in Jenkins, the build script does one more uh, important thing that I need to show you. So here we are in the official build script that's used by Jenkins. And uh, here is the usage for it. And I won't go into this in detail, but you can see uh, you pass a lot of the information into the script and it's not hard coded. And that's what's being done here. And uh, then the one thing it does that is uh, in addition is we have a scheme where the uh, build ID is part of the image. And so from there's a console command that allows you to print the version of the software. And that's important. Uh, and we'll talk about that later. It's important to make sure we're um, testing, for instance, the right version of the software. And so there is a file called version.h, and these echoes are basically building that file with the version. In, which, with the version. In fact, this, this pound define here is... Um, is the actual version ID. And so once we get that done, then we just do a make and uh, either a make all or a make clean. And that's what the target is. Now for programming flash, it's a little simpler than building. The software application STM32 Cube Programmer, which is a GUI and which you need to download and install, also includes a CLI tool called STM32 Programmer CLI. And this does everything we need. So to program the flash using the CLI tool, you have to tell it the image file, obviously, the address of flash, where to start programming. We want to start at the beginning of flash, and you can get that address from the data sheet. You could look at the linker script, but I can tell you for all of the STM32 uh, Cortex-MCUs I've used, uh, this is the address of the start of flash. And then you need to optionally tell it the ST-Link serial number, which is the interface. Uh, if you only have one ST-Link connected to your laptop or whatever, you don't have to give it this. Um, but uh, I have multiple, so I do need to give it uh, the serial number. 
And there are different ways of getting these serial numbers, but one way is to run the CLI with just the dash L option, and it gives you a list of uh, various things, including the ST-Link serial numbers. So a trivial flash programming script for the debug image, where a lot of things are hard-coded, is this. I uh, set a variable called CLI, which is the executable. The uh, ST-Link for my uh, board for the connection is here. And then this is the image I want to program. So here's the command, uh, the CLI. I tell it to connect to a SWD port. Here's the serial number. I tell it to download this image and program it starting at this address. And then when you're done programming, do a hardware reset. And that's all there is to it. Now, for the Jenkins server, uh, like before, the script is a little bit more complicated because we don't want to hard code a lot of this stuff. But it isn't really that much uh, different, so I won't go through it. But if you want to look at it, here is the path in the project. I came across an issue with the makefile and wanted to go through that with you and describe a solution. By the way, I found this just by scanning through the, some of the makefiles just to make sure there weren't problems like this. And so the issue there is a, there is a full path name in the makefiles. And this is the path of the linker script file. And so this is the line in the make file, and this part in red is the problem. And this uh, path is a reference to a file in the IDE project folder. Now that's okay when you're doing builds from the IDE, but for Jenkins builds, only files pulled down from Git into the Jenkins workspace can be used. You can't have uh, the build, when you're doing a build from Jenkins, going off into some um, IDE project folder to get a file. So there is a fairly simple solution to this, and that's in the project properties. You can actually set that path name. And this here uh, line shows you how to get to that setting by going through the properties. And when you find it, uh, this path name here is uh, what should be used. And if you look at the directory where the builds are done, the current working directory, this path name will uh, work. And so I have a, uh, some screenshots showing the settings um, or the properties window where you change it. And so it's this uh, long field here, which contains a bunch of variables, um, and we're replacing it with uh, this path. So it's fairly simple. Uh, there is a prompt at the end of this lesson where we discuss an alternative solution to this. I want to do a short demo of the build automation. So here we are in the top level folder of the IDE project, and I'm going to go into the folder with the tools. So here you see the build and the flash script that we talked about, but there's also a build eye and a flash eye. I created these scripts for when you are working in the IDE project and want to do builds from the command line rather than use the IDE GUI. So the build eye script takes the configuration, either debug or release, and the build target, which is either clean or all. So for the debug release, I want to do a clean. So there it goes. And what it is doing is removing all the object files, image files, and all of that kind of stuff. It didn't take too long. So now I want to build the debug configuration, and I want to build all. So let me start that. Now, this is going to build everything. It's going to take a little bit, so I'm going to pause the recording while it builds. Okay, so the build finished. So now I want to program the flash with the debug build. So I do uh, flash i debug, and there it goes. And that doesn't take very long. So now the board is ready for testing. So here are the prompts for this lesson. I'll pause here just for a second and then go through them one by one. What is another way of fixing the issue we just looked at where the generated makefile had a full path name in it for the linker script? Well, what you could do is have a pre-build script that gets executed by Jenkins, and that script would edit the copy of the makefile in the Jenkins workspace 
to change the full path name to a relative path name. You made some code changes and the Jenkins CI CD build fails, but just for the release build. What might be the problem? Well, if the changes you made affected the make files, maybe you only did an IDE build for debug and not for release. So the make files were only updated for the debug folder. As part of your development work, it is best to do both debug and release builds from the IDE before committing and pushing new code to Git. Besides adding or removing application source files, what other kinds of changes would, requ would require you to do IDE builds to update the make files? Well, there are probably a lot of things, but uh, some that come to my mind is one is changing compiler options, such as the dash D option that's used uh, to define preprocessor symbols um, on the compiler command line. Another uh, change would be switching between the HAL and the LL libraries. That's going to cause a lot of changes and are going to require a lot of uh, updates to the make files. So here is a short summary of what we did in this lesson. We identified the IDE tasks that must be automated for CICD, and we identified them as building images and programming the flash with these images. Then we came up with schemes on how to automate these tasks in scripts. And these are the scripts that Jenkins will be using. So in upcoming lessons, we'll continue preparation work for our Jenkins pipeline. Well, that's it for the lesson on automation of the IDE task. Thanks for watching.